welcome to British Biomedicine Institute. Today, I, Dr. Pramod Khatri, is going to present a simple topic named as laboratory sample management. So, the result of any laboratory examination is only as good as sample received by the laboratory. So, basically, there is an importance of good sample management, and it is essential to accurately accurate laboratory diagnosis. First point. Second point. Influence therapeutic different and decisions. Third point, it can directly affect patient care and the outcome. And fourth point, influence laboratory efficiency. So there is a requirement of good sample management in every laboratory. So now comes the sample versus specimen. In general, a sample is a small portion which is a true representative of a large portion of material or a body. Whereas a laboratory specimen is basically a sample of a medical patient tissue, fluid or other material derived from the patient which is used for laboratory analysis, examination or study like your urine specimens or tissue specimens. So sample management can be done with the help of sample collection, sample labeling and documentation, sample transport, sample referral, sample storage and sample dis, uh, disposal. So the laboratory responsibility is that we must provide sample collection information like what, when and how and we must provide appropriate containers and supply. There has to be a def uh, defined, we must also define a good labeling system so that the samples which are being collected are labeled properly and then we must assess all the samples for pre-examination before shipping to the laboratory. So in order to get the best result, we must be uh, filling the test requisition like your patient ID, test required, date and the time of sample collection, source of sample uh, when, where appropriate, clinical data where indicated, indicated, contact information of requesting physician or authorized individual. So we have to fill the lab requisition form in the correct details. So now comes the collection requirement. We have to prepare the patient and we also need patient identification, identification, type of patient sample required, type of container required for blood sampling and we have to label the, that empty vial and there has to be a special handling conditions and we must follow safety precautions. So uh, we can provide the sample collection information with the help of the SOPs which are available or we can use various techniques to collect the blood sample from a patient like we can use fingerprint, a finger, finger prick method. So sample labeling is basically an important step and every sample we have to label with patient name, unique patient ID, test which has been ordered, date and collection time and collector initials and we can use computer generated barcodes wherever possible. So if there is an improper collection then it can result in delay in reporting test results. There will be unnecessary redraw or retest, decreased customer satisfaction, increased cost, incorrect diagnosis and treatment, there can be an injury and patient can die if there is an incorrect result which will be provided by the laboratory. So we, whenever we are collecting a sample, we must ensure that we have properly labeled the sample and we have completed the requisitions and we must make sure that the vials, either your blood vials or urine vials, they are tightly closed. So now comes the sample rejection criteria. Basically it can be due to if there is an unlabeled sample. Second point, broken or leaky tube or container. Or third point, in, if there is an insufficient patient information. Fourth point, sample labeled and patient name or the test equation they do not match. And if it is a hemolyzed sample, basically it depends on the test which is being carried out. So if there is no fasting sample, if it is required, sample collected with wrong tubes like wrong, wrong preservation or on the sterile inadequate volume of required preservatives or there is insufficient for test requested or prolonged 
transport time. They all can lead to sample rejection criteria. So what action we can take against the rejected samples? We can inform the authorized person, first point. Second point, we can request another sample. Third point, we can record rejected samples. Next point, we can retain rejected sample based on the present criteria. And extraordinary, under extraordinary circumstances, we may request suboptimal samples. So, whenever sam uh, sample registration and log is important, and we, the register should include the date and collection of the time, date and time of receipt, sample type, patient name, demographic as required, laboratory assigned identification code, and test to be performed. So, all these data has to be present in the register. So, sample handling is basically an important step. So, if we are handling a blood sample, we must use our uh, proper SOP and we must wear our gloves and lab coat so that if there is spillage, then it can prevent us from any type of infection. Sample storage basically, it must be storage stored in accordance with the required SOP and we have to determine the retention time for how long you want to retain that sample. We have to determine the location where it will be located, it will be stored. We have to describe proper conditions under which it will be stored and we must establish a method of organizing the samples. So now comes sample retention. Basically there has to be a written SOP for sample retention and we must monitor samples including freezer and thaw cycles every uh, regularly. We must maintain an organized accessible system and we can establish a schedule to review all the stored samples and we can also establish tracking procedures. Now comes the sample disposable. We must set a policy for sample disposable because these, if there is an improper disposal then it can lead to various types of infections. Uh, it will be uh, dangerous for environment and for patient also or normal uh, population also and we must compliance with local and country regulations and there has to be a written disinfection procedures for every sample which has been discarded of. Now comes a sample transport so we can uh, maintain the integrity of a sample like the temperature, uh, preservation of samples, special transport containers and time limitations. And we must ensure safety regulations are met in every aspect. Managing sample transports, we must meet all the applicable regulations and we, we should hire or the responsibility will be given to the only experienced person for all the transport procedures and we must ensure that the sample is protected from temperature, transport time and packaging and preserve are done in a good manner so that it can reach in a good condition to the laboratory. So in the summary, we must provide a laboratory handbook or written SOP for, uh, with collection information to all the participating or laboratory users. And there have to be a system for tracking samples as they move through the laboratory. We must establish and implement a policy for, for all the samples stored and sample disposal. And we must also maintain sample integrity and we are assured that all the transport regulations and requirements are met and we must always follow universal precautions because we do not want to spread the infection to the general population to the environment. So the key message here is the laboratory must have good samples in order to ensure that there is accuracy and reliability of testing and confidence in the result. And the sample management so, uh, directly affect patient care and outcome. So this is all about the presentation. I hope you have gained a lot of clinical information through this presentation. Please like, share, subscribe our YouTube channel named as British Biomedicine Institute. Good luck. Goodbye.